Welcome to the City of Quincy Board of License Commissioners meeting on May 7th at 4 p.m. I will read into the record the open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Sue, can you call the roll? Please? Yes. Uh, for Commissioner Castley, Inspector Bullman. Present. Director Conlin. Present. Chief Jackson. Present. Chief Kennedy. Present. Chair Crispo. Present. Five members. We do have a quorum and we will get right to agenda item number one. Here we got a request to the City of Quincy for a special use permit one day liquor licenses for their following events at the Hancock Adams Common. May 18th, music of the 40s and 50s from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. June 22nd, music from the 60s and 70s from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. July 6th, the Patriotic Celebration from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. August 17th, music from the 80s and 90s from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. September 21st, Quincy Choral Society, Quincy Symphony Pops, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. October 5th, Food Truck and Music Festival, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Coddington Street, John McDonald. <coughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, John. Why don't you tell us about your events? So the city runs um, uh, monthly events out on the common, except in October, we go to Coddington Street and they are free and open to the public. We uh, request beer and wine um, with specialty cocktails for the themed events. I'm representing the mayor's office, but I'm also representing Craig's Cafe who will be um, conducting their business with us on May 18th, and they will be back again on July 6th. And then on June 22nd, August 17th, September 21st, and October 5th, we have Hive, um, which has been, uh, both Craig's and Hive have been out on the common and have um, conducted their business for us every month. I think we were gonna also mention June 2nd, on the Ross lot, we have the Pride event. That's a second agenda. Second agenda yes. item, okay. You can yeah. stay put. I'll stay put. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Great, thank you. Um, any questions, concerns regarding the City of Quincy for special use permits, one day liquor licenses for the Hancock Adams Common? Seeing none, board members, any questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. All right, looking for a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of the City of Quincy for special use permits, one day liquor licenses for the following events on the Hancock Adams Common, May 18th, music of the 40s and 50s from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., June 22nd, music of the 60s and 70s from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., July 6th, a patriotic celebration from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., August 17th, music of the 80s and 90s from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., September 21st, the Quincy Choral Society, Quincy Symphony Pops from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And lastly, October 5th, the Food, Truck, and Music Festival from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Connington Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great events. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Agenda item number two, here we got the request of the Quincy Pride for a special use permit one day liquor license for their annual Quincy Pride event on Sunday, June 2nd from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Ross lot, 37R Parking Way. John. Right, so we originally were at Pageant Field um, for a couple of years and that has not been able to be um, booked any longer for this particular event. And uh, we were, last year we moved to Kilroy Square and it was rained out. Um, and we found also that the space um, was small. And so we decided to approach the mayor's office to see if we could um, 
use the Ross lot and they approved and we are looking for a license. Craig's Cafe also will be um, in attendance and the beer company at Marina Bay is also gonna be in attendance. Both of those organizations we've work, worked with before. Break Rock. Break Rock, yes, sorry. Yep. Any questions, concerns regarding uh, Quincy Pride for a special use permit, one day liquor license for the annual Quincy Pride event? Seeing none, board members, any questions, concerns? I think this is old hat for you guys. Yes. Yeah. So looking for a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of Quincy Pride for a special use permit. One day liquor license for their annual Quincy Pride event on Sunday, June 2nd from 12 to 6 p.m. in the Ross Lot 37R parking way. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day. You too. Agenda item number three here regarding the request of the Quincy Chamber of Commerce for a special use permit for their annual Kilroy Square Farmers Market, which will run every Friday from noon to 5 p.m. beginning June 21st through October 25th in Kilroy Square. And for a special use permits, one day liquor license for their annual beer garden at Kilroy Square, which will run Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. beginning May 16th through June 29th. Tim K. Hill, Director of Chamber of Commerce, Welcome. Hello. Why don't you tell us about your events? Yes, it's a continuation of what we've done. At Brian Lavery, who is the owner of Widowmaker and Brewer, head brewer. Um, we're coming back, I think, third year, fourth year, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's been a while, but we've been there the last few years. It's the same um, schedule. They'll be on the side of um, the parking lot and take this sort of the, the one leg to one side of the parking lot, set up their tables and then tap right outside the, the door of the atrium, mm -hmm. basically. So we're not in the middle of, of um, Kilroy Square, and then the farmer's market will be on the other side on Friday. So uh, these gentlemen have done a great job running uh, this event for the last, uh, this team, um, for the last few years. Um, and anything we've done in Quinton, we've used them a lot. So they've done a great job pulling a great crowd um, and the Thursday, Friday, Saturdays through, I think it is June 29th is right now is what we're looking at. June 29th, yes. June 29th. And then contingent on? Whatever happens yes. with the restaurant. Yes. yes. Yes, whatever happens. Well, these guys are flexible, so we'll make it work. Great. Uh, hopefully we can stay all summer into the fall, um, but we'll make it work, um, whatever you folks decide. We'll be back. Um, sometime in June, once we have a firm date on the opening of the other restaurant. So, um, food truck as well. So yep. Ryan puts a food truck together. They park on the right outside the uh, the Ballards um, outside, and it's a rotating food truck. Very successful last year, and uh, we we think it will continue to be successful. Great. Any questions, concerns from anyone regarding the Quincy Chamber of Commerce? for a special use permit for Kilroy Square Farmer's Market and their annual bear garden. Seeing none, board members, any questions, concerns? No, I just, from a, a, a police perspective, we've never had an issue there. It's always been very successful and a really good crowd, well behaved, and it's been a, it's been a great addition. We appreciate your support and officers always stopping by checking in, so thank you. Great, looking for a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of the Quincy Chamber of Commerce for special use permits for the annual Kilroy Square Farmers Market, which will run every Friday from noon to five, beginning June 21st through October 25th in Kilroy Square. And for special use permits, one day liquor licenses for their annual beer garden in Kilroy, Kilroy Square, which will run Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. beginning May 16th through June 29th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Much. Good Thank luck. You. Great for good weather. Agenda item number four here we got the request of the National MS Society for a special use permit for their 2024 Bike MS Cape Cod getaway on Saturday, June 29th. Riders will gather at State Street Bank and are expected to be through Quincy by 8.45 a.m. till 
Um, Tim Munesti, um, Mr. Munesti is unable to attend. This is a reoccurring event. I think they've been in touch with the police um, and um, we've had this for uh, a number of years. I think it would be okay if we went ahead and um, asked anyone here if they had any questions, concerns, and board members, any questions, concerns? Nope. Seeing none, looking for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of the National MS Society for a special use permit for the 2024 Bike MS Cape Cod Gateway uh, Getaway on Saturday, June 29th. Riders gathering at State Street Bank and are expected to be through Quincy by 8.45 a.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. <clears throat> Agenda item number five. Here we got the request of the Ragnar event, LLC, for a special use permit, one day with the license for their annual Ragnar rally on Saturday, May 18th. Runners will relay through Quincy with an exchange point at the YMCA and finish at Squanum Point Park. Susan Brown. Hi, welcome. Why don't you come up and tell us about your event? So the Ragnar Relay is a 200 mile relay. It starts in Groton, Connecticut. It finishes here on the 18th. Um, it's teams of 12. They run, you know, for 24, 30 hours. Um, so the finish line is here and they have bands and, or not, not bands, but like a DJ and they have, we, they have a beer garden that we're looking for the one day permit for. Um, they have a stopping point at the YMCA so people take a break there before they head on to the finish line. Great, thank you. Uh, any questions regarding Ragnar Events LLC for a special use one day liquor license for their annual Ragnar Rally? Seeing none, board members, any questions, concerns? Do there be any food or food trucks? I believe they have, they're getting pizza, but I think they're getting it from like a local place and having it delivered. Is it at Squanta Point Park or is that Yes, it's at Squanta Point Park. Park. Yeah. And when do you anticipate the runners getting there? I think they're, they have in the past come in as early as 9, but the last ones will come in close to 8 p.m. Okay. So, like so what are the just, hours of operation at Squanta Point Park? Do we know? They have at 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh, okay. So it goes yeah. throughout okay. the day because they they come in in little yeah they come in in you know in drips and drabs and okay rips. and they have worked with DCR on all the great permitting. yeah this is our like fourth or fifth yes. year here yeah we're aware of it I just wanted to make yep. sure that there'll be somebody yep. there and yep. all the big work is in order looking for a motion or any uh, more questions. Yeah, just a quick question. Who, when you say the beer garden, who's serving the alcohol? Do you have somebody uh, identified to do that? So Smile Mass is a nonprofit, and Ragnar pays us to staff the beer garden. Okay. Um, and all of our volunteers are, if they're not tips trained, they will be tips trained before the 18th. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion. We'll approve the request of Ragnar Events LLC for a special use permit, one day liquor license for their annual Ragnar relay on Saturday, May 18th. Runners will relay through Quincy with an exchange point at the YMCA and finish at Squatum Point Park. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Agenda item number six. Here we got the request of Off the Hook Bar and Grill, 1269 C Street, for a special use permit and temporary extension of their licensed premise for their annual House Neck Flounder Roundup and Block Party on Saturday, June 8th rain date of June 9th. The event will include live music and extension of the, excuse me, and the extension is a portion of Bayview Ave adjacent to the restaurant, John Gallagher. Hi, John, how are you? Good evening, good evening, everyone. Why don't you tell good, us about you. your event? Um, so this is the third annual event. Um, we have done this now uh, for three years, obviously. Um, we're just really repeating what we've done in the past. It has worked. We're not looking to expand on any of that. Uh, the event itself, we're requesting for Saturday, June 8th, with a rain date of June 9th. Last year, we dealt with a lot of rainy weekends, um, so this I'm just going to you know, hope that we can get it off in one weekend, um, unless there's any other major weather events that pop up. Um, the closure permit was submitted today. Um, 
The street closure typically is about 9 a.m. where we'll go out, we'll put some stanchions out in the street, uh, block it all off. That goes until, I'm sorry, you know, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, runs along Bayview Ave side of off the hook. The fishing portion is all off property. Uh, the people that are out fishing that would return for the rewards and block party. We have live music throughout the day. Um, two different bands starting at noon, uh, going until 7 p.m. Uh, beer tent, draft beer, sangria, signature cocktail will be set up. Um, food will be served inside the restaurant unless they opt to do a takeout and bring it outside. The street will be outlined, stanchions, barriers. We usually put signage up, leave one of the sidewalks open so people can pass by. Uh, after the last band, the beer tent will be shut down. Customers are encouraged to go back inside for additional live music, food, uh, and continue the evening. At that point, we clean up the street, break down the tent, stanchions, barriers, and all that, and reopen to the public, or reopen the street to the public. Great, thank you. Uh, anyone here have any questions, concerns regarding off the hook bar and grill at 1269 C Street for a special use temporary extension of present of their licensed premise for the annual house neck flounder roundup and block party. Seeing none, board members, any questions, concerns? Uh, John, I, I just ask uh, if you talk to Detective Brown in the back there, just uh, coordinate any uh, anything you need from the police side, okay? Definitely. Looking for a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of Off the Hook Bar and Grill, 1269 C Street, for a special use permit and temporary extension of their liquor, uh, of their licensed premises for the annual House Neck Flounder Roundup and Block Party on Saturday, June 8th, rain date June 9th. The event will include live music, and the extension is for the portion of Bayview Ave adjacent to the restaurant. Talk to All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck, John. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Agenda item number seven here regarding the request of Mason's Steakhouse Inc. doing business as Mason's Steakhouse for an all alcohol beverage restaurant license for the premise located at 1170 Hancock Street. Proposed manager Robert Gonzalez proposed license premise is 11,340 square feet restaurant on three floors. The basement will consist of storage. In a prep kitchen, the first floor will consist of a main kitchen, dining room, bar, restrooms, an outdoor dining area. The second floor will consist of an employee room, service bar, three dining areas, restrooms, and an office. In addition, the applicant requests entertainment and brunch license for the same location. Uh, requested hours 8 a.m. to 1 a.m., 10 a.m. on Sundays, Jimmy Liang. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, commissioners. Madam Clerk, uh, my name is Shimi Lang, and I represent the, uh, uh, the new restaurant group that's going to be in, uh, opening Mason's Steakhouse. Um, so we're, we're just here basically asking for um, the license to do this. Uh, we've been in business in the city of Quincy for 25 years now, um, and we've always been very transparent with what we do, and that's what, why we're here to give full disclosure of what we're, what we're about and um, open up ourselves to questions in regards to this project. Um, but I believe um, everybody probably has heard of this, whether through the press or it was um, mentioned uh, when um, the approval of the buildings were going up. So, but here we are. Um, it's gonna be an American um, steakhouse, um, fresh pastas, freshly made, and um, all sorts of baked goods. And uh, we envision this to be a medium to high-end um, steakhouse. I believe this is something that the city of Quincy needs. And the hours of operation that we're asking for is, um, I believe it's vital to uh, the businesses in the city of Quincy because since COVID, um, it has not been the same. Um, nightlife is not around anymore. And we're hoping um, that we could utilize this chance to uh, bring back some sort of nightlife to the city of Quincy for um, whether it's for us or for the other uh, establishments in the in the area, and um, yeah. Great, thank you. Questions? Um, anyone here have any questions, concerns regarding Mason Steakhouse Inc. doing business as Mason Steakhouse for an all alcohol beverage restaurant license for 1170 Hancock Street? Um, 
if you gentlemen want to take oh, a seat yes. and we can allow people to come forward yeah, sure. please Absolutely. and state your name and address for the record thank you you're welcome <clears throat> randy who's 50 russell park uh, the steakhouse will open at the top of our street uh, we got the notice as did my neighbors and the thing i have most trouble with is the 1 a.m time that it was that is seeking to get i'm not aware of what the other restaurants you do how late they stay open but i think 1 a.m is really late okay i maybe 11 p.m would be good but 1 a.m it worries me when we want to promote nightlife at the top of the street it's a nice street okay we they've worked really hard on the buildings to get them to look nice i'm not interested in a lot of carousing around extra boozing and whatnot so i just want to come say my piece i think 1 a.m is too late i appreciate something like 11 p.m at the latest thank you thank you, thank you. Welcome. Hi, thank you. My name is Joe Ann Sarasoli. I've been a resident at 54 Russell Park for 43 years. As most of my neighbors, their legacy homes have gone from parents to their children, and anybody that's there has been there for quite a long time. The problem with this situation here is that we're a neighborhood, and the nightlife of Quincy is not our concern. That if you didn't put it in a neighborhood, it might work. The, the other thing is the parking. Where are all the workers going to be parking? Are uh, the people that go to the restaurant? How? Where are they parking? There's just no room. Our street is the way it is on double sides, but there's driveways. I, we've gone through this with the Quincy College kids parking in front of the driveways that we can't get in and people will leave their cars but when they come back and it's not there someone's paying for that and it's usually the residents. The hours of operation are insane. It, it, it's almost 24 hours of operation there. It, I don't know where it says 10 a.m. You're going to be open seven days a week? Is that the premise? Seven days a week? That's the proposal, yes. Seven days a week. That's food trucks coming in, uh, all sorts of garbage. It's insanity. Plus, the smell of the restaurant will, consideration is beyond me. You're going to have groups of weddings and uh, functions there. Where are these people going, parking, and how late are they going to stay if it's a one o'clock uh, beverage, whatever. If this feels, if this restaurant feels, is this license transferable? If you give the license for a, the liquor license, is it transferable? Can they give it to another restaurant? We don't know right now. We can oh. hear your concerns and we can take them under consideration, but we're not. I didn't know if it was once the license is given to that address, then it goes forward because who knows what could happen. Uh, the other thing is um, about the workers' pond and with the amount of time that this restaurant is being open. Is there any people that are going to be living there? It's open like all hours. And as far as the license, it's a restaurant. It has to have liquor. But 11 o'clock, we're a neighborhood. Those people are not going to the Quincy T Station. They're coming down our street. It's just, I, I just find it not cohesive to how we've lived on that street with the track and the high school and now with the new buildings on the end we've been through a little bit too much but as far as the license for the liquor right now i think it would be astronomically and 
a deficit for the community. Because no one wants to sell their houses. We want, it, we want it to be legacy. We want it to give it to our children. We've been there a long time. Everybody keeps up. The, the center street is beautiful. But if you're having 60 to 100 people that don't care about Quincy, then it's going to be a different place. So that's me and my pick on my look. Thank you. Hi, how are you? My name is Robert Angelo Sarasoli. I uh, live in 54 Russell Park. Um, we've lived there since 1982. Um, I actually was a state representative for that district since between 1975 and 1991. So we have a history in Quincy. I grew up in Quincy Point. Uh, I actually testified in favor of the proposal of Center and Stone when it was presented uh, in a Zoom meeting, I think, during the pandemic. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was a Zoning Board of Appeals or what the, uh, but it was talking about the project. And I think my neighbors also testified in favor of the proposal. We are not NIMBY people. We're not, not in my backyard. So we believe in the progress of the downtown. We know we live downtown. We realize we're in a downtown setting. But as my wife said, we most all the houses on Russell Park are residence A. And um, when they did this proposal, I spoke in favor of it, but I questioned them about the parking. And they have uh, enough parking for the residents, but not for visitors of the residents. So the, the, the center and stone buildings have enough parking for the residents in the building, but there's no uh, proposal for the people who are going to be visiting them. And we all know that people visit people. And uh, we, have, uh, we don't have residents only parking on the street. There were two houses that were in, in the proposal that center and stone bought. Uh, they're still both there. I suggested to them during the hearing that they take those houses, which they did, but they knock them down and create parking for whatever they were going to put there. And there was a proposal, of course, that this was eventually a Masonic Temple was going to be a restaurant. Uh, so my concern is, is that there is no parking. I mean, they, the, the T station is not going to become a parking garage again. We know that that's going to be slated to have housing above the, the tracks uh, with some retail. They're not putting a parking garage there. So right now, uh, we have the overflow parking for the project has been going. They have been going to the Quincy Historical Society <coughs> parking lot, which, is, which the Quincy Historical Society controls because the city now owns the building and the land where the Quincy Historical Society is. And of course, they just purchased another lot well, purchased another house, houses which they knocked down, and they created a lot there. So I would propose that uh, the restaurant have some kind of valet parking or come get into some kind of contract with this historical society because there are open lots there and they're available at night, particularly at night, and also during the day. Uh, so they might want to enter, look into entering some kind of proposal with the Quincy Historical Society. Because a restaurant of this magnitude, 11,000, 13, what, 12,000 square feet, whatever it is, uh, they're going to have a lot of patrons. And the patrons are going to look, as we all know, they're going to look to park closest they can to the, to the facility. And that means on Russell Park. So uh, we're really not, we're going to be descended upon by these people. And um, we need some relief there. If they're not going to knock the two houses down, Center and Stone isn't going to knock those two housings down and provide parking, then we have to look for parking uh, somewhere else. So I'm not opposing the rest. I mean, I think it's good for the downtown. I think it's good for the development. I think it's good for the tax base and it increases the, the value of our houses. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, you have to think about they are our neighbor. We want to be good neighbors. They're going to have to be good neighbor too. So that's my statement. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. I have another letter from one of our neighbors that couldn't make it here. I'm sure you have it. We can take it and put it into the record if you'd like. can take that. Thank you. Please, Mr. Liam.
First of all, I want to thank you guys for coming out and uh, voicing your concerns. Um, as a resident of Quincy, I grew up in the city. Um, I've been in business in the city for 25 years. I believe in working with the community. Um, this was an opportunity for me to reinvest back into the city of Quincy, as I've always tried to do. I've always worked very closely with my neighbors to be extremely transparent. Um, we have about 30 parking spaces in the back. Um, that's for um, staff, but also for customers as well. And I agree with you in terms of mess, um, in terms of uh, the residents only parking. That I think that's a step that we should take. Um, and I and and but the big part of it is I believe it's our messaging to our customers. Our capacity is about 240. Um, walking, so currently, I also um, operate Fuji 54F, Fuji WC over at West of Chestnut. And the parking situation over there, it's relatively the same. But we tell all our customers, no side street. We tell our customers, utilize the garage. And that's our messaging. And in terms of walking distance between the restaurant and that parking garage is actually a little bit further than the garage um, that's currently at Quincy College. So part of our messaging to our customers is going to be, we encourage everybody to park in a proper parking lot. Um, and our hours of operation is more, um, and um, I mean, I do understand about the liquor and the music and all that stuff, and, um, and we're willing to work with the commissioners. Um, we will come up with a proper plan, um, in addition to what's existing already. Um, but, but by no means, man. Um, we we want to work with you guys. We want to work with the community. We want to work with the neighbors. We understand your concerns. Thank you. Of course. Appreciate that. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak? If you'd like to come up and speak, um, you may. He mentioned that there's plans already in place. Why are we here? What you have a liquor license already? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Okay. We don't. No. We don't no. have anything. So that's that's our main concern. Because we, we pick up litter all day long from the construction site, which is fine. They're very pleasant men. But we between the high school being rebuilt, the they, I mean we've been very good neighbors to the city of Clinton. We've kept our properties up. And I'm not, I, I don't want to call policemen for someone parking in front of my driveway. It's just not the way it's supposed to go. And if there's people there at two o'clock in the morning in my front lawn, which they have been because of the school, um, it's, it's not in the best interest of everybody. So. Okay, that was my. Thank you. Anyone else yeah. with any yeah. questions, concerns? Yeah. <clears throat> Jimmy, you say you operate a restaurant in town here? Quincy Center, yes, sir. What are the closing hours of that restaurant? We used to open until 1 o'clock until COVID. And then where is it now? Um, it's at 11 o'clock, but okay. it was, it's also because due to COVID. Why do we have to go to 1 o'clock again? Thank you. Thank you. Please. As a resident of Quincy, not exactly in the same neighborhood, and I certainly respect the Sarasotans and the people who live on um, Russell Park. Um, I also have great respect for Jimmy and his team, and I've seen them in operation. They're not outsiders, and they've run, I think, four or five restaurants here in the city of Quincy and done a fantastic job. The choice is that there will be a restaurant in that location. It was built for a restaurant, and I think we couldn't do better than having Jim Nang and his team because they will be part of the community as they have been right down the street. Um, they are in a tougher parking space with they are now, or at least as tough as it will be, but they've always attracted a very, very good crowd of people. They're not rabble rousers, they're not late night partiers, they're people who come for good food and good drink, good quality. Uh, the prices are such that it's not going to be a college crowd, it's not going to be a bunch of young kids getting wildly drunk and then, you know, having problems. And as Jimmy said, it, and it's not just talk, if there are problems that the neighborhood experiences, there's nobody better to have than Jimmy and his team to answer to those problems.
problem. So I have great respect for the Sarasotas and all the people who live on Russell Park. But this is going to be a restaurant, and I don't think we could do better. And I'd certainly rather have someone we know than someone we don't know and someone with a phenomenal track record. And you all know that Fuji and all of the different restaurants that are owned by Jimmy and his team have never created a problem um, for the city of Quincy and North Quincy or Quincy Center for all these years. And I think it's very important for that end of Quincy Center to, to be redeveloped. And, and I do understand Mrs. Sarasoli's concerns, the high school, the track, and now this, but the beauty of this is now the, the construction is almost done and a lot of the problems will go when the construction ends and I think it's important for them to get the property finished and get it open and if there are concerns and they don't live up to their word, I will be here speaking for the Sarasolis and the people of Russell Park. But as the president of the chamber, Fuji has been a member of the chamber, they're actually a Hall of Fame member of the chamber, they've been here for 25 years and they've really themselves. Otherwise, I wouldn't get in the middle at all of this because I respect both sides. Um, but I do think it'll be an addition to the neighborhood. And I think that the folks who live there will be well respected, which is more than as much as you can ask for any retail or restaurant establishment. So I would say speak in favor of this, given the track record, the 25 year track record of the, the folks who are going to run it. And again, if there's a problem with it, I'll be up here with the other side if, if they don't live up to their commitments, but I'm very confident that they will. Great, thank you. Thank you. And I also uh, wanted to note that I was um, contacted by City Councilor Dave McCarthy and spoke to the mayor um, on this um, consideration of this and the city and the city councilor are working with uh, Jimmy Liang and his team on coming up with um, sharing municipal parking um, at the T at the Historic Society um, where uh, the Citizens Bank currently is when they move back across the street. Um, and, you know, um, where when, when I spoke to the city councilor and the mayor, I said that I would consider, um, and if my board would be okay to, um, to do it, is to go ahead and put through um, the application, and then um, we will work with the, um, Jimmy and his team before we issue the license, there'll be a parking plan in place. And that's with the city councilor, Dave McCarthy, the mayor's team, and Jimmy's team, and of course the licensing board. And so if you wish to come up and speak at the podium. There is a gentleman that would like to speak that hasn't been here yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's right. Don't let us speak. No problem there. Thank you. My name is Arthur Cannabis. I'm the trustee of the Ifred Desenzo Trust, who happens to own the Sullivan Tire building. So the first time I was made aware that this was going to be turned into a restaurant is a little communication that I received as a partial of butter, two buildings away. The, the, the only concern I have, and I'm sure it's been brought up in front of all of you fine folks, is first of all, how many seats are there in the restaurant? 240. 240. 40. 40. So I'm absolutely positively sure you're good operators, otherwise you wouldn't be here spending a fortune in this particular location. But the thing that concerns me the most is we've got a building that has been, for the number of years, a Goodyear tire. Goodyear tire left and I leased it out to Sullivan tire. So Sullivan's got another whatever years left on the lease. I'm concerned that the amount of traffic that's going to be created, regardless of the amount of ancillary parking that all of you people have stated they could use. I know myself, I always try to find a parking space as close as I possibly can to any location. I'm sure that applies to all of you fine folk. So my concern is how much effect is that going to have on the building that we own and on the tenancy that has been there for a number of years? So obviously, if the area becomes choked like a bottle neck. <laughs> You're trying to pour more cars into one little area. It's very difficult for me 
to understand how you've got 214 seats. 40. Correct? 40. And then you've got how many other people, how many people work for you, roughly? Well, it's, it's got to be an excess of 20, okay. I would think. Yeah. So do we have any parking already set aside for their employees? Yes. We do. You I, missed that. I came in late. Yeah. I apologize. Yes. The traffic is horrible. But I, I, that's what I was concerned about is the amount of traffic that's going to be generated during their peak hours. Now, their peak hours, for all intents and purposes, do not come against what my present tenant ha has for hours because most of the people come in there to fix their tires and do what they have to do during the day. They really don't do a lot of night business. There is some. But what's going to happen five years from now when the tenant leaves? Well, how much more parking are we going to require from the new tenant that I'm going to be able to put in or hopefully put into the location that we've owned for since 1962, 63, something like that? Uh, so that's my concern for the future potential benefits of my particular piece of property, is this going to have a deleterious effect on the marketability of that particular property, say three years, four years, henceforth, after they've established their business? Now I've got a problem with somebody that's going to approach me to come into this exact same location with Sullivan Tire. Hey, where are we going to park? You have ample parking, don't you? Mm -hmm. We've got enough parking to do the job presently. Great. As a tire store, what happens if another restaurant comes in? They're not going to be able to park. Well, the city will work with them just the same as they're working with uh, the Liang Group. I, I can I can only take you for your word. I, I don't I've had very little reaction action with the city of Quincy. My family has for years, but regardless, there's always a change that comes along where somebody benefits from the change and other people are, are left kind of high and dry. I just want to voice my opinion that I don't want to be left high and dry a couple of years from now when I might have an empty building. Other than that, I wish you all the luck in the world. I've been in the restaurant business, tough work. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. I'm sorry, but it, maybe it's my age. You're just confused. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> On this agenda item, requested hours 8 a.m to 1 a.m. Is this a all day affair with liquor? In 10 a.m. on Sunday, so the restaurant's gonna be open. That's Mass General Law, that they can apply for 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. So okay. what they decide to do with their hours after, once they open, see how um, you know it goes. They, they'll probably open for the day at 11, you know, and and close. Yeah. You know, at one, or if they don't have any business at one, they may go to twelve. But their operation hours are set by the state of Massachusetts, and that's what they can apply for. Okay, apply for that's the golden rule. So, but you you can deny that as city of Quincy licensing. We can. Okay, and our counselor, because he has mentioned to us that he was totally against the 1 a.m. Uh, liquor license, that 11, he was going for the 11 o'clock. So I don't know, but okay. See how it turns out. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, concerns by anyone else? Seeing none, board members, any questions, concerns? I could just say from, from a police perspective, um, I've been a police officer in Quincy for 26 years and uh, Mr. Liang has been operating restaurants and establishments uh, for 25 of them. Um, I can tell you that I, I've never had an, a problem at any of those restaurants. They're well run. Um, you know, and again, I'm just speaking from a police perspective here. I don't have a, a dog in the fight. Um, but I, I, uh, I also recognize that you know some deal, some issues we deal with in Marina Bay with with nightlife. Right. Um, you know, being close to residences and there's some even with the parking down there. There's parking issues, or there was before. You know, when Waterworks was was in existence, and we dealt with a lot of issues down there as a nightclub. And my understanding of this is it's a it's a medium to high end restaurant and not a nightclub where I would have concerns if this was a nightclub 
in a residential area in Russell Park's a beautiful street. Um, you know, I, I, I'm just speaking, you know, again, from the police perspective, I, I, we have the ability if what Mr. Cahill said, uh, if there are issues that we could pull the uh, licensee back into the licensing board and we could review whatever is decided here today, if there was an issue with the, say, one o'clock close, if they, if they did vote to give them a one o'clock close, if there were issues in the, in the neighborhood was being negatively affected, as Mr. Cahill said, I'd be the first one to be asking um, uh, Clerk Crispo to, to have them come back in as we have for other establishments that we're addressing that police officers are dealing with. So uh, that's just my perspective. Can I have a question? Should I come to the microphone again? Yes, please. If there are issues with the licensing, will we be notified that the license is being reviewed again? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yes. thank you. We, we set an agenda and and we put that agenda up every every two weeks. Okay, because we got our notice through certified mail from right. Jimmy. Right. That's how I learned about it. So I didn't, didn't know the mechanism by which we're notified. Yeah, that was part of our job. Thank you. Thank you. 48 hours before every agenda meeting, we are um, mandated by law to put it up on our City of Quincy website. Thank you. Yes. Are you taking comments about the uh, restaurant? Yes. Should I come up now? Please. State your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Kevin Norton, 21 Whitney Road. I'm not uh, anti-business, but I'm anti-traffic issues, trash, noise, rodents. Um, I abut the properties. Residents say, I don't think there should be a restaurant there to begin with, but it's probably gonna happen. I, I'm not gonna be able to stop it. I've been in this neighborhood for 25 years. When I first moved here, nice and quiet, no cars on the street. Now it's like a nightmare. I've been living over there two years, a nightmare, 24 7 noise with them trying to finish the building. And now we got a three level restaurant coming there. How many parking spots are there? Does anybody know? There's 30 floor um, at the back of the building. 30? Yes. And I was there the other day, I come at 15. I'm just telling there's, you. There's, um, the, um, in the back of the 1150 Hancock Street, there's a parking space that's allocated. Well, they're parking for the bank. I don't understand. They're parking for the restaurant, and they're parking for the bank, which is next door. So, it's a sir, if you can face us, it, we're not going to. Well, they 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 make a comment, so I want to. Okay. Sorry about that. We're we're um, listening to your concerns, and um, you weren't here for it, but um, just to update you. Um, the Liang Group is working with uh, the city councilor, David McCarthy, the mayor's office, and it, um, the parking is under consideration and will be have a plan in place. If in fact they're approved by the ABCC, they'll have to get a parking plan in place before we'll let the licensee take the license to open up. Well, I want to see that parking plan. Well, just... We haven't finished parking plan. It's something that's in the works um, with municipal lots here at Quincy Train Station, Historical Society, and um, the, where the Temporary Citizens Bank is now. Because I had someone just the other day parked right in front of my driveway. And I'm like, how am I going to get out of my driveway? So, you know, I'm going to call the police. They come. They're going to try to find the person walking around the square. It's like ridiculous now. Traffic. It's just going to get worse. It's like it's like a speedway on Whitney Road now. So I have concerns, and I want to get some assurances that there's going to be, you know, someone to talk to. Uh, I don't want to have to have the police on speed dial. You know, I'm already getting fed up with it as it is. Yeah, the, there's been a, a broader conversation here today um, with um, the Liangs on um, their partnership with the city, with the neighborhood, and their years in our city, and how they do um, have a reputation of working with um, their neighbors, so. Um, I don't see how the pockets are gonna work out. They got, they got a building there with how many apartments? 
And where are they all going to park? The next building over? We hear your concerns. Um, I'm not the parking enforcer. However, we're, we're working to make a plan moving forward. Yeah, I'm not happy with the hours either. Should be earlier for the residents in the neighborhood. My property's right there on the line. And there's three or four of other houses right there. So when you say one o'clock, what's that mean? They all start leaving at 2.30? And then what about trash pickup? Is that gonna happen at four in the morning like Sullivan Tire? I can't even keep my windows open. So the neighborhood's going downhill because of all this business. My taxes go up every year. My quality of life goes down every year. So. It is Hancock Street. And so that's yeah, it's residence A. It, it, it is. There's it, no parking on the street and there's no parking on Russell Park right there. There is business on Hancock Street. It is allowable. So um, we have to take that into consideration. Yeah, take into consideration residence A. People live right next door. Thanks. Thank you. So, there is, so in fact, please come to the podium. So what you're saying is that, in fact, if the license is approved, it will be approved pending a parking plan. That's right. So that that there's there's a couple of different um, stages of the license, and one is the ABCC approval, and then the um, the city of Quincy's um, contingency on the parking plan right. going forward. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because I mean. Obviously, it's absurd to think that you can operate a restaurant on 30 parking spaces, so there has to be parking somewhere. And it is on the red line, yeah. and let's remember that uh, people in our city, there are four red line stops, and people, you know, from, you know, the south side of the city, the, the um, west, uh, the north side of the city, in Wollaston, utilize it. And I think it'll, it, it's, it's a good thing. Um, to be right on the train line. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? No one. Okay. Board members? Looking for a motion. Yeah, just to confirm, so we're, if we make a motion to approve, it would be, um, subject like we do sometimes conditionally on uh, meeting certain obligations going forward. So with that being said, I'd be comfortable making a motion to approve the request of Mason Steakhouse Inc. doing business as Mason Steakhouse for an all alcoholic beverages, restaurant license and entertainment and brunch license for the premises located at 1170 Hancock Street. Proposed manager Robert Daniel Gonzalez. The proposed license premises is an 11,340 square feet restaurant on three floors. The basement will consist of storage and a prep kitchen. Uh, the first floor will consist of the main kitchen, dining room, bar, restrooms, and an outdoor dining area. The second floor will consist of an employee room, service bar, three dining areas, restrooms, and an office hours, 8 a.m. to 1 a.m., 10 a.m. on Sunday. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And looking for a motion to accept the minutes from the April 23rd hearing and waive the reading. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes from April 23rd and waive the reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Our next hearing is May 21st. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you.